So as this uh, uh, slide says, science never solves a problem without creating a more. Any number of lectures you talk, discuss, brood over, still you have many questions unanswered. But it's quite interesting to learn. Every time at least some clarity will come, uh, some more questions will come. So again, as Dr. Osiyadam has clearly clarified that uh, CR's FBSI is slightly different from CLAPI, the intention is quite different. I am going to talk about the lab diagnosis of catheter related bloodstream infection and the set of new preventive strategies using the catheter what they follow. We see that the severe consequences of the catheter related bloodstream infections are uh, more than 75% of the all catheter related infections are due to the use of central line. And uh, really the burden of the central line infection in India is not known. However, in other advanced developed countries, they do have a systemic surveillance and they know the burden. Unless you know the burden, you don't know how to uh, manage or have a preventive strategy. So one good thing happening currently is the global health security agenda has come in and they are giving their expertise and money and they are roped in all the premier institute in, in India that includes the CMC Bellur as well as uh, Manipal Medical College, Kasturba Medical College. So we are generating the data. Maybe in a year's time, uh, the maybe two year cumulative uh, burden of the catheter associated infection will be given. So that will be the uh, first time uh, baseline data generated in India. And again, that will also give us uh, some information on the attributable cost of the uh, catheter related bloodstream infection and the mortality also can be derived to some extent from the uh, surveillance. And again, this is another area where different type of catheters have a different uh, percentage of infection. And uh, this is very old slide, 2006 it was done, thereafter there is no much studies uh, comparing different catheters. So this is another area which, which we need to find out. As uh, this slide was shown by Dr. Rosier Ram, again, uh, most of the study shows that in different settings, a different uh, area of contamination is there. Whereas in CMC Velour, we do see in the hub contamination more than the surface contaminant. But majority across the world, they do see the surface contaminants. It's almost 60% you can see, number one side. Number two side is 12% and the third one is very less, less than 1%, unknown reasons are 30%. So why this 60% are preventable? If you do a thorough cleaning before drawing up the blood culture, that will save uh, really a lot of infections. You can, it's quite evident from this slide. 60% are uh, preventable. So that's why you know, many people still, many centers continue to use povidone iodine. It's very clearly proven that povidone iodine is slightly means inferior to the alcoholic chlorhexidine. And many places though they have a clear knowledge that alcoholic uh, chlorhexidine is very good, but they fail to understand that weight by volume is more important. 2.5% weight by volume is what you need to have. Many places volume by volume, 2.5% volume by volume they use because much cheaper when they get the tender, the pharmacy, sorry, the procurement office doesn't know the difference between the weight by volume and volume by volume. So that's how they miss. If they miss 25%, I think 2.5% is only 0.5%. That is, it gives only 20%. 80% is taken away. So you can't expect any uh, effect from that kind of disinfectant. So that is the straight away answer for the contribution of 60% of the skin site infection. It's a skin contaminants being as a uh, catheter triple infection. So this one, uh, uh, one uh, incidence which if you can take care of thorough cleaning of the skin before putting up the catheter will prevent a huge percentage of catheter related infection. So next coming to the lab diagnosis of the catheter, cat, uh, colonization of the catheter, as Dr. Rossi said, two types, one is necessitated catheter removal. So in one word if I have to say if the patient is unstable then remove the catheter. If, if the patient is stable and then you can salvage the catheter. So there are two different methodologies. Since you don't have, if you want to salvage the catheter, then you don't have the catheter in the lab. 
Whereas, if you are going to remove the catheter, then you have the catheter in the lab for the culture. So that makes a lot of difference. You get the catheter in the lab, then what you do is, the distal 5 cm needs to be chopped with the sterile scissor. Make sure the transport also it takes in a sterile environment till it reaches the microbiology lab. That is very critical. Many people, they don't follow that one. They fail to take it in a sterile container and quickly pass it over to the microbiology department. And in the microbiology department, with all sterile precaution, the distal 5 cm needs to be chopped and then that needs to be rolled down to the bladder plate and incubate for 24 hours and then look for the colonies, identify the colonies and look for the colony counters. But the interesting aspect is if it is more than 15 then uh, it's uh, positive. Uh, interesting thing is you are estimating only on the external surface of the catheter, not the internal surface and lumen cannot be picked up by this method. Some people what they do is after rolling this they uh, yes. syringe out uh, into the lumen and then collect and then do. It's really a little cumbersome and you may introduce contamination and detect from the external to the internal. It's a little messy and the reliability of such a procedure is not advisable in many centers. So the sensitivity and specificity of this test is 85% sensitivity and specificity is 82%. Again, uh, uh, Vandana was asking about this uh, 15 colony forming units. Many centers, uh, when you lower it down, the sensitivity goes up. When you push it up, then the specificity comes up. So again, it's more like an, a manipulated figure. So it's not definitive. Uh, you need to go by the clinical feature and the pattern of blood culture, whatever the blood culture you received or before or after also correlates. So there is no straight answer for this. Then quantitative catheter segment culture, the most accurate method this is. All you need to do is, the catheter has to be put into the tube and the entire container has to be sonicated, pulverized with the electrical charges and again the 5 centimeters, what it happens is it releases the sticking organism inside as well as the outside. Then it gets to the broth. So this broth, the 0.1 ml of the sonicated vertex to broth and as well as this 0.1 ml diluted in 1 in 100 both has to be simultaneously streaked then incubated next day morning adjust for the dilution and do the colony count and if it is more than 100 colony forming unit then it is significant so it's more important to sonicate vertex and then use it so this is more like any tissue even if an orthopedic, uh, any implant or uh, uh, tissues from where you need to know the infected burden, then infecting organism, everything, if you sonicate, then it releases, otherwise it won't release. And it releases from the external surfaces as well as the internal surface. And this dilution also makes, otherwise overwhelming growth may hide Again, the sensitivity specificity is, sensitivity is 87% and specificity is 98%. That's why we call it as an accurate test method. Now I am talking about the catheter salvage procedures that is catheter sparing methods. Number there are three types are there. The first two are the most common ones. Simultaneous quantitative blood culture and the second one is differential type 2 positivity and third one is occurred in orange glucoside cytospin which is not much used but it's part of the theory for completion sake I am presenting. And the simultaneous quantitative blood culture Definitely you need to take one from the central line and one from the peripheral line and if the central line has got more than five fold then it is significant. This is the count. Bacterial count five fold more then it is significant. That is the, it has got a sensitivity of 93% and a specificity of close to 100%. This is much better than the uh, TDP, time to direct positivity, which I will be explaining next already Dr. Rosia also has informed, parallel blood culture. What you can do is, one you can take from central line, another one you can take from the peripheral line or what you can do is central line, then after removing the central line, then the tip also can be taken. That is an another path. Or what you can do is, if only the central line is there, then take it from two different tunnels. So, two different lumens, then you, that is a pair. So, you need to have in a pair. 
Similarly, when you are calculating the number of catheter days, so each tunnel has to be counted as a single catheter, but multiple tunnels will be there. So it should not be counted as a single catheter. It should be cal cal sorry, calculated as three catheters. So because now cumulatively, when you see the, the skewing of the results, will be there. So always you need to be mindful of that. So this is how it happens. Results, some organism, same organism isolated from both samples. The diagnosis, CRPSA confirmed, both negative, then it's uh, clear cut, negative peripheral blood culture, but positive central blood culture, then mostly it's contaminant other than the staph aureus and cardia. So <coughs> I make it a little more clear with this slide. If both are positive, then it's a significant you need to treat. If both are negative, it's not significant, it makes life much easier. Then if it is blood culture, the last one, the blood culture alone is positive and catheter tip is negative, it's known that patient is having a bacteremia, so you need to treat. So only place where it challenges you is blood culture is negative, but the catheter tip is positive. So this is where you need to uh, be a little more cautious and you need to have a follow-up. So as Dr. Osia Brahm was said, it's very clear Staph aureus definitely you need to follow up, candida you need to follow up, even when they are asymptomatic. Even when they are asymptomatic you need to do because there, there are three studies, the Parker and all which he has showed and thereafter the couple of more studies are there. After the removal of the catheter, if it is a staph aureus and you discard it as a contaminant, they had within 28 days, they followed it up for 28 days. When they followed it up for 28 days, quite a few, uh, close to 6% they had a bacteremia, staph aureus bacteremia. At that moment they may not have signs and symptoms, subsequently they will have signs and symptoms. So close monitoring is required in this and the blood culture follow-up is also required and the IDSA guideline also says that to treat. But they don't comment on what antibiotic should be given, for how long it should be given, both these informations are not given, but they uh, advise you to treat that yellow bar. So this is the systemic review on meta-analysis where they clearly said staph aureus and the candida has to be treated. And based on this evidence, IDSA has recommended to treat for staph aureus and candida. So it's an absolute risk reduction is 13.6%. 13, 13 so differential time to positivity, again at least two hours ahead of uh, Peripheral line it should flag positive, and uh, I will tell you the important issue. So this has got an, uh, the disadvantages. If antibiotic is given intraluminally at the time of drawing blood through the catheter, colonized catheter may become falsely negative. So you should not give an antibiotic. That's more important. And the sensitivity specificity is 85 percent and 81 percent specificity. Accurate in orange, all you need to do is. You have take one ml of your blood drawn through the CBC and subsequently centrifuge, make a smear, stain it with the in orange and quickly have a look at the microscope and see. Again, it's a non-specific test, just for the completion I've seen, but in some cases it may be helpful, that's all. So this is the CDC CRPA criteria, whatever I have said earlier, I'm just bringing it back. One is the catheter tip with more than 15 coliforming units and second one is uh, catheter line uh, flagging two hour earlier and third one is in the quantitative blood culture three fold higher colony count from the central line again is is the diagnosis for uh, catheter linked bloodstream infection so the most two important aspect which you need to be taken care of is one is before the antibiotic it should be taken if you are giving antibiotic, then no point in uh, doing the culture tip or ordering for a culture tip. After all, it's of no use. So definitely that precaution has to be there and that needs to be entered into the request slip. Second one is equal volume of blood also has to be drawn and added. If you don't add equal volume, if you have added different volume, 4, 5 ml, 2 ml or 4 ml, 1 ml, then the two hour, especially if you are looking at the differential time of positivity, then you are lost. So in simple words, if I have to say, 
microbiologist's role in this area is very minimal. It's all in the hands of the clinician. So this lecture needs to be more often taken to the clinician who does the <coughs> blood drawing and who is willing to send the culture. Because the 80% of the success of the microbiology is in the hands of the clinician because they have to send the right cl clinical specimen to the microbiology. So if these two taken care well and in addition to that if they do very well about the skin, thorough cleaning of the skin because that also matters, that may introduce the contaminant and the whole purpose of doing the culture trip uh, and the blood culture, bad blood culture uh, will go waste. The purpose will get defeated if contamination comes in. And now the new version of the biomedical machine is there which is very good for the microbiologist because at runaround time is brought down very less. From 3 hours it comes down to 1 hour. So in that situation whoever is using this machine they may have a problem in defining this criteria. So because of we need a turnaround time to be reduced. So this will be an another bias. So I will just share a few clinical tips which we follow in our lab. First we instruct that never accept single bottle culture means single blood culture if CLA BSI is suspected. Because how do you interpret that? So it cannot be interpreted. So from the uh, catheter alone they will draw answers. There are certain units, intensive care units are very well versed and they don't do this mistake. But certain units once in a while they send a different person will be there, a junior will be there and they make this mistake. So whenever the diagnosis of suspected catheter related bloodstream infection is there and they have sent one, then we call them and tell that uh, you are not going to benefit from that. Since it has been drawn, we will take the willingness and uh, we will process it. But by and large, we try to discourage doing one blood culture. Second one is, again if there is a suspicion and if they are planning to send one, then we don't. If it is more than two days, it is understood that the catheter may have a colonization. Or two days, it may be three days also. The, usually in the ICUs, if it is more than three, four days, you know, generally they send it as a two. They don't send it one. And we also keep repeatedly telling to the intensive care units, if the catheter, catheter is there for a long time, more than two, three days, we insist on pad, not in a single. So more than two or three days, 70 hours, you can keep in a cutoff and you don't uh, collect one blood sample. And uh, again, staff are yes, fibrous negative staff, and pseudomonosarginal, sir. And in certain times, uh, we may get a skin contaminant, uh, Asinitobacter baumani. So that is more challenging to say whether it's a pathogen or not. It's very well known that 40% it can be a skin flora. So that is the third which is really puts us into jittery. And other one which I would like to uh, tell clinicians is the amount of the volume of blood which they need to collect it. So in adult invariably they can manage to get a good amount of blood. But when it comes to children, because it's very difficult to collect it, it's known. But minimum expected is 2.5 ml per kg body weight. 2.5 ml per kg body weight is expected across all the age groups, at least up to 25. And uh, if it is uh, for 30 days, it should not go beyond uh, 5 ml. And beyond, it should not be collected for 3 consecutive because you know, certain patients may stay in the long term in the hospital, 2 months or one and a half months, at that time you need to be a little careful, you need to be mindful that not only blood culture alone they are drawing blood, for many other tests also they are drawing the blood, especially for pediatrics and they make it very anemic, so it should be careful and there are clear cut guidelines that there how much should be drawn and how frequently it has to be drawn. And in Belur what we do is, uh, before dispatching the bottle, we weigh the bottle and we write it down on the side of the bottle and then send it to the ward. And when the bottle returns, we uh, minus the cap weight and we measure the bottle and we know that how much uh, volume they have added. The weight is converted into the ml and we know for sure that where it is adequate volume was given, where uh, inadequate volume has been sent. So we do the audit at every month end and as part of the accreditation process we document and then we keep uh, reporting to the units which sends a low volume. So this is routinely practiced. 
And again, everywhere, wherever you are sending blood culture, it should be a set. And here in this picture, it clearly shows that if you send one set, the sensitivity specificity is going to be sensitivity is going to be only 73 percent. So when you do the second set, then the incremental increase of 20 percent you will catch up. So that's the importance of the second set. Whereas third, it's optional. It's good to have, even if it is not there, it's fine. The number you are going to miss is only 3 percent. The incremental increases doesn't make much difference, but a minimum two is must. And this is our reporting format where more than likelihood of infection is if it is a staph aureus, Brucleus streptococcus, streptococcus pneumonia, Neisseria, <coughs> Enterobacteriaceae organisms, Haemophilus influenza, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and then Enterococcus alone is slightly doubtful. Otherwise, most of the time it will be pathogen, but we need to rule out the skin contaminants. When we know for sure that our skin preparations are good, so we consider enterococcus as a pathogen. The uncertain is 15 to 30 percent of the blood cultures positives are uncertain pathogens. This includes coagulase negative staph, viridin streptococci, and non fermenters. For unknown reason, in Indian skin, a lot of non fermenters are there. And our people also, they don't take part when they are sick for a few days then, before coming to the hospital, even the hospital. So because of that, I don't know. But definitely, where in other Western literature, we don't see non fermenters We do see a lot of non fermenters And we resolve this issue by patient risk factor, prosthetic device, or clinical evidence. Or number of blood culture positives, or compared with antibiograms, sometimes uh, biomarkers also may help us to so, so, it's a composite index where we divide, uh, divide and then we will say the significance. Definitely micrococci, aerococci, recently nowadays, if multiple times it occurs, the guideline uh, tells us, cum uh, cumitex tells us to consider that as a pathogen. So, the two important qualities of the microbiology is turnaround time and accurate report. So, the faster you need to give that because it's a critical illness and uh, it's a catheter related infection. So, it's more important that you have to identify and quickly give the AMR also. So, if it is a gram negative, do whether it's a carbapenemase negative or positive. That's more important for the management. You can use gene expert and there are many number of tests in the market, it's available. Of that, the biomerius is the very simple and 30 minutes kit test which you can do. So, that has become sort of a gold standard to compare other tests. So, this is one of the best kit to look for the carbapenemase positivity within half an hour of the culture positive. So, even the CLSI guidelines recommends the carb IMP, which you are all be aware. But the what is latest is this is in a card flow is the lateral assay where you can see the sensitivity is 100 percent and specificity is also 100 percent. It has not yet come to India, but within 15 minutes, it's an FDA approved kit. You can have not only the carbapenemase, you can also say what carbapenemase it is. Whether it is NDM, IM, VIM, OXA, or KPC, and in one card all the file is put together. So if you do this one card, then you give a correct report. Because this is very important, the new antibiotics are expected to come to India. A lot of new beta lactam, beta lactam is inhibitor. Those role positive its effectiveness is going to be based on the which type of carbapenemase it is. Similarly, you need to quickly uh, identify whether it's polymyxin resistant or cholesterol resistant or not resistant. Again, like CARBA NP, polymyxin NP is there. Within two hours, you can get the result. And another important is, since it's a domain of the hospital infection control, you need to know whether it's a chromosomal or plasmid mediated. If it is going to be a chromosomal, then it's going to be restricted largely to one patient or two patients. If it is going to be plasmid mediated, any time it can spread, disseminate, so the challenges and the alertness has to be there. So now the all the uh, infection control guidelines, they are recommending to make sure that what it is to identify chromosomal and plasmid. So in the last few slides, what I would like to mention is, Monitor again within 15 minutes can catch up a carbapenemase. There are different types of kits looking for different parameters to identify that one and it's evolving and they keep reporting. And the last few slides which I would like to cover is the new preventive strategies that is the catheter. 
whether the microbiologists want to deal with this catheters, the first antiseptic coated catheters are there, then antibiotic coated catheters are there, then mix of both antibiotic and antiseptic coated catheters are there. So now it looks the first second generation catheters means the antiseptic has failed and the antibiotics also not very promising. Now they are looking that the antiseptic in combination with the antibiotic in the days of MDR, they are thinking that it may have value. Because if you get an MDR infection, then cost effectiveness is there with the antibiotic coated catheters. They have improved, they are working on it and they are improving it. It's evolving. As of now, there is no definitive information. And the first generation had only the external, sorry, external surface was coated with antibiotic. The second generation catheter, both external and the internal are coated. Now the third generation, up to the connector it is there. So they are extending and that is the third generation catheter is there in use. And these are all the randomized control which clearly shows that uh, the chlorhexidine sulfur sulfadiazine are not very good. And again, uh, minocycline rifampicin on their own is not good. But when chlorhexidine with minocycline and uh, rifampicin is added and the three, two coatings with antibiotic and one coating with the chlorhexidine has shown promising. So these are all the latest information in the last one year in the publication that's available. So the last one which I would like Excuse to touch me. upon is last Excuse time. me, uh, Dr. Balaji, can you conclude in five minutes because yeah. of this may be one overlapping. Five minutes, only one slide. Okay. So the last one is antimicrobial, the log solution. So in the ECMIT what they have presented recently is the NICE solution, non-antibiotic based catheter log solution and it's very promising. 0.01% nitroglycerin, 7% citrate and 20% ethanol. So it gives an excellent uh, result as of now. It's more promising and it, Islam Rad is the pioneering man in this. It's subsequent two publications you can see. And it, within two hours of installing into the catheter, they have seen MRSA getting clear, MRSE, VRE, then multi drug resistant pseudomonas aeruginosa, Clepsilna pneumonia, and Acinetobacter pomeni and E. coli. So it's like it looks like a magic solution we have to see. And the preliminary study shows that the in a controlled arm they had 1.6 per thousand catheter days, whereas in the lock solution, absolutely there was no catheter infections. So this may come handy a little later. So 